If I could have your attention here in the media center, we are going to continue on with our winner's availability here for the 43rd annual Pennsylvania 400, and we are joined by our winning team here. We have Chris Busher, driver of the number 34 Dockside Logistics 4 for Front Row Motorsports. We have crew chief Bob Osborne and general manager Jerry Freeze. And let's just start it off with some superlatives. First of all, Chris, you've become the first Sunoco rookie contender since Joey Logano to win a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race. He did that in 2009. You're the first NASCAR Xfinity Series champion since Brad Keselowski in 2010 to win a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race. So you made your name in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and now in your rookie season, you're a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series winner. How's that sound to your ears? It's a... Uh pretty awesome it's a pretty good company as well so it's a pretty pretty wild day um pretty uh, pretty eventful weekend a lot of things worked out really well there at the end and um some things that uh thought were were heading the wrong direction when i uh cut a rear tire down just trying to uh, to avoid a wreck and you know we uh we ended up in, in a good spot there at the end and you know made uh bob made a good call to hold out on the weather and, and make sure that you know we could uh run as far out on fuel as we possibly could and it worked out uh worked out really well the weather got here just when we needed it too bob so you're the one to blame for the fog or what, what did you did you have any connection there <laughs> yeah yeah if you want to call it blame sure <laughs> well, talk about what you had in the car today and uh, chris's uh, ability to get it around for you um all in all we had a uh, to be honest with you a, a, you know top 15 play place car it was decent, um, and it's heading in the right direction from where we were the first race here and for, for where we are with our program. But, uh, you know, with with fate, you know, really going our way today and, and calls going our way, which we haven't had a lot of this year, it, it worked out to put us in position to win it. So, Good deal. Jerry, uh, big win here for, for the team, and uh, the first since uh, David Reagan at Talladega. What's this mean to your organization to come in here and win at Pocono? Yeah, I think it's just a, I think a further validation of where you know Front Row has come over the years, and and uh, you know Bob Jenkins. Uh, I hate that he's not here. He he was at Talladega. I was just talking to him on the way in here. Uh, he had some business obligations today, but um, he puts his heart and soul into this race team to get it to this point. And we've we've had a great alliance this year with Roush Fenway and Bob and Chris joining our team. Have really had a a big impact and like Bob said we have had just no luck at all this year with breaks and and it seems like the last few weeks they're starting to turn our way a little bit and obviously today we got some phenomenal breaks to be in the position we were in and and uh, you know I credit Chris had a, a, a good job to avoid a, a situation on the back stretch that kind of looked like it was going to derail our day and and uh, 30 laps later all of a sudden Bob makes a call and we got the lead so you can't get a better break than that and, and Mother Nature smiled on us so uh, but a great day for Front Row, and, and we really appreciate uh, Chris's efforts, Bob's efforts, and everybody here today. Great. We're going to open the floor up to questions. If you have a question, raise your hand, and we'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start up front here with Nick, and then we'll work our way around. Nick DeGroote, Motorsport.com. Chris, can you just talk a little bit about the emotions on Pitt Road while you're waiting for this to be called, and it just went on and on. It seemed like it was never going to end. And Bob, could you also talk a little bit about returning to Victor Lane and how maybe this is a little more special because it's with a smaller team? Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, we were uh, sitting there on pit road and, and kind of just waiting for everything to, to happen the way it's going to. And uh, to be quite honest with you, we've uh, we've had some, like Jerry uh, Jerry said, we've had some awful luck this year and a lot of things not quite go our way. And try not to get my hopes up because I know uh, know just as soon as uh, as soon as we would have that that fog would have rolled on out and we'd have been been restarting again so you know between um, between losing three super speedway cars at, at three super speedway races this year we we found ourselves in a, in a in a hole in points and you know we've been trying to to be able to put ourselves in position to, to win a race to get back in the hunt and that's, uh, that's exactly what these guys did today they got got a good strategy going that uh, that really set us up to to be able to be in the chase here in in just a few weeks so you know as we're sitting there on pit road i'm just uh being a little bit selfish but doing a rain dance waiting uh hoping the fog doesn't roll out um just watching turn one and every now and then i'd see the billboard down there and just uh 
just as soon as we would, it would uh, it would disappear again. So it's uh, we're joking down there. Everybody's asking what turn one because we uh, we couldn't see that one either. <laughs> okay, we'll go next to Bob. Uh, Bob Pocker, CSPA. One of the Vegas sports books had you 1,000 to 1 odd <laughs> to win this race. Um, first off, do you know if anybody actually bet on you? And second, uh, what, what type of odds would you have given yourself? I mean, considering you, know, you, you haven't been qualified in the top 20 all year. Yeah, it's, uh, I hope somebody bet on us and uh, made out really well. It would uh, <laughs> be awesome for them. Um, you know, we, uh, we had pretty... Uh, pretty steep odds coming into this one but you know we, we've been heading in the right direction and there's no there's no mistaking that we've been qualifying better we've been racing better uh you know we've had better speed better averages uh, we're just getting to the point now where we need to uh need to be able to finish them and you know today i, I think everybody knows it's not a it's not just a f pure run to the end and, and all out speed there was a, a lot of a lot of other things going on today but you know, you take advantage of every situation that, that's presented to you, and, and that's uh, that's what we did today. We're going to keep working to make sure that we find more speed and, and we're able to go win races on, on days where track's dry and, and clear all the way to the to the checkered flag, and, and in this case, 160 laps. Okay, we're going to go to Brant, and then to Zach, and then to Rick. Brant James, USA Today Sports. For, for each of you, it's going to rain, if you could. Um, how is your, your assessment of what would make this an acceptable or a successful season change for when you come in the tunnel to begin the weekend and when you leave here in the rainstorm tonight? Yeah, I guess uh, coming into the weekend, um, you know, evaluating our season and, and what we wanted to have happen this, this weekend in particular would be, uh, you know, improvement upon the first time we were here. And... You know, having a better handling race car, having a faster race car relative to the competition, um, and, and being able to build on that for the rest of the season was our goal, um, what we were looking for. Um, and, and we did accomplish that. We, we had a better, faster, uh, more competitive car than what we had the first race here, so I was happy to see that. And, and, and we're going to continue to do that race after race for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, th I think we talked about it at the beginning of the season, and uh, you know, the plan was always to, to try and make the chase, and uh, that was that was the goal. So we're uh, we're that much closer now. Uh, you know, we like I said, we got a hole to, to dig out of just from uh, super speedway racing, but we're uh, we're in a good spot, and the cars have been being been getting faster each and every week. And these second times around, we're going to make sure that we have more speed than uh, than we did the first time. We're going to go to the Zach to Rick to Scott, and then back to Joseph. Zach Sterniola with the Pocono record. Uh, for you, Chris, uh, I know you touched on it already that you're kind of in that hole in points right now. What's the importance over the, these next five weeks to, to kind of just make sure that everything goes smoothly enough that you can get yourself into that top 30 and stay there as you prepare for the chase now? Uh, surely our bad luck's got to be past us at this point. Uh, no, we, we've been, uh, <laughs> yeah, good, good call there, but you know, we, we've been uh, been seeing a trend in speed through the last six, seven, eight weeks, and we know that uh, we are we are on the upwards climb, and we have been we have been cutting that points deficit almost every week. And so, all we got to do is keep doing what we've been doing. You know, we're not going to make any drastic changes um, unless they're in the right direction. So, <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, we'll keep ro keep rolling with it. You know, we're um, we're in a good spot, and we can we can definitely make up those six points. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna try and get a lot more than that, and be be ready when the chase does start to uh, to make sure we can advance as it goes through. Go next to Rick. Hey, uh, Rick Pinell with Shuttle Server for both Chris and and, and Bob. Um, Brad was talking earlier in the weekend about what what it takes for you know the guys who don't have all the advantages of the super teams. You know, what will it take for them to, to compete? And he said, he said that when he was younger, it was really about seeing opportunities and really taking advantage of them when they're in front of you. I guess in the context of that, is it incumbent on you all to do things that are a little bit out of the box like you did when you stayed out today? I guess when I cut a tire down under green flag, it kind of forced us into a little bit of a hole to, to start. But, 
uh, definitely got to get a build on it from there. So, uh, you know, we're, where we're at in points, we needed a win to to be able to keep going forward. And, and so, you know, taking that chance is 100% worth it at this point. I'm uh, it's pretty shocked that uh, everything worked out. And uh, Bob was brave keeping us out there off fuel. I know we were going to be running close to close to empty there with all those caution laps. And glad they did bring us down pit road and, and wait it out. Okay, we're going to go to Scott and then back to Joseph and then over to Bob again. Scott Walsh from the uh, Scranton Times Tribune. Chris, um, you, you've kind of been, there's been more of a spotlight on your fellow rookies, on, on Chase and on, on Ryan. Has that kind of helped you out this season where maybe the, the attention has been more focused on them instead of you? And how does it make you feel when you hear some of your, your fe the fellow drivers saying that, you know, if the race has to end, I'm glad to see a guy like Chris Buescher win this race? Yeah, it's pretty neat to hear that. And, you know, I've uh, told a couple people, we got to go out to uh, the Las Vegas Cup Banquet uh, last year as, uh, as the Xfinity Series champ and hang out with uh, the 16 Chase contenders. And I got to talk to a lot of those guys and, and just, you know, talk, uh, talk a little bit outside of racing and uh, got some tips, uh, you know, just a lot, of, uh, a lot of good advice and just good people. And uh, it's neat to, uh, to hear them say that they're, they're happy we were able to pull it off if, uh, if they weren't. And, you know, going to, uh, to the Rookie of the Year run, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, the, the spotlight has been... Uh, been on the 21 and the 24 and you know does it make a difference to us probably not um you know we're uh, we're going to keep doing what we know to do and we're going to keep, keep trying to make sure that we're uh, we're up there running with those guys every week uh, regardless of, of what attention is is put where but does it help maybe easier rookie season learning you learning kind of that kind of stuff because the pressure is more so on them uh it's uh, it's been a tough rookie season regardless um and, it, and it's always that way whenever you move up to the to the next series there's a, a steep learning curve and i expected that this season it's uh, it's the same one i went through when we got done with an arca championship and you move into the xfinity side thinking there's no problem you'll be winning races before you know it and it's um it's just not the case there's uh <laughs> it's really really difficult to do and uh, so we we left the xfinity series last year and we uh, we knew that it was going to be difficult this year to to really get in a groove and, and figure out how these cars drive differently and you know we're uh, you know I'm not going to say that that the attention has, has or the lack thereof has made it easier it's it's just us doing what we know to do and, and trying to learn each and every week. Okay, to Joseph then to Bob. Joseph, welcome FrenchChurch.com for all three of you guys. How do you feel like this affects your the future of the team in terms of getting more sponsorship and building front row motorsports to get to a higher level on the racetrack. I'll go ahead and jump in. I guess I'm more on the sponsor side of things, but um, I, obviously it puts us in a different place. And and uh, when you can say and put in your literature that you're a, a Sprint Cup Series winning team, it certainly gives you a little more clout than otherwise. And and uh, and we saw a bump when we won the race at Talladega a few years ago. Uh, it happened to be the very first race that Love's Travel Stops was on our car, and they took a two-race program that's now a 20-race program with us, and, uh, and it evolved over that over the last three or four years. And CSX is our other big partner around the 34 program, and, and they've grown over the years with us. They've been with us for five years, too. So I, I feel like we, we do a good job for those partners that we have, and, and this hopefully will be a catalyst to have uh, a few more that want to come on board and help support our program. Bob? Bob Parker, ESPN. Uh, Chris, did you have a, did you, was it your decision whether you joined front row for the season? I mean, did, did Jack give you or, or uh, Newmark give you like a choice, like stay in Xfinity or go? And can, and if it was your choice, why did you make this choice? Uh, I think we got to the point where we all knew that, you know, it was time to try and evolve it and keep keep moving up. And, you know, it was a, a good fit to, to try and Use the use the teams to to come together and have that alliance to try and build a build both programs stronger and you know I think we see it with with all the teams in the garage the the ones that have more cars out there are uh, are able to be be more successful they have more notes to go off of and you know that's what we've been able to to do this year is just to just to build on it and, and with Landon being a teammate Landon is a, a different teammate than I've had uh, just someone who really dissects everything, uh, talks a lot more in depth about what he's feeling, and uh, sometimes a little bit long-winded on that, but <laughs> he's, uh, he's a really good, really good guy, and he's been great to learn from, and it's helped me in my transition into the cup side. So I think it's been a great fit. Uh, you know, we were uh, obviously able to, to put everything together to be able to, 
to get a win this season. So that's a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty awesome place to be right now. And now we just got to uh, now we got to keep improving on it and and just get through that chase uh, as strong as possible. Do we have any additional questions for our race winning team? We'll go up front here to Chris. Let's get a microphone to him, please. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Congratulations. Um, you've got your first cup win before Austin Dillon, Danica Patrick, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, a bunch of drivers, and Kyle Larson's another one. Did you ever think that you would probably be sitting here before them? Sure hope so. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always the, the plan and the idea is to get here as quick as possible. So, uh, you know, it, it's – it's a different way to do it, and you know some people won't uh, won't have the same respect for it. But you know when you look back, it's uh, it's just about strategy, and you know a lot more of the credit for this one goes to goes to Bob and the team for making sure that we were uh, we were in the position to to be able to to make the call and be brave. And uh, you know it's pretty awesome to be able to say that that we have won a, a Sprint Cup Series race. It's a uh, pretty special. Been working towards this since. Uh, I really decided we were, we were going to do this as a career and not a hobby. It was was 12 years old, so it's uh, 11 years in the making. Pretty uh, pretty awesome to be up here now. Uh, by getting on a plane and going to Utah, <laughs> so we got a uh, we got a road course school that we're trying to figure out how to how to be better at Watkins Glen now. So there's uh, no time to celebrate, unfortunately. Go up front to Scott here. Scott Walsh from the Instagram Times. Chris, if you could just clarify um the, the, when you had the cut tire do you, do you remember around what lap that was it's like 92 or something yeah yeah so it's in the 90s it, it basically the um getting into turn two it was after a restart or pretty close and um basically the couple guys in front of us got crossed up getting into two and out of shape and um i tried to uh to avoid the the 44 um who was a uh, kind of Kind of sliding back and forth, and uh, when I pulled down the track, there was a there was a car to the inside, uh, a little bit closer than um, than I thought. And and honestly, I probably didn't need to pull down that that far, but uh, we've been hitting the right rear this uh, this year before, and that's that's no better. So it uh, it smoked really bad. It, it actually cut the tire down coming off of three as we were hitting pit road. So we got uh, got really lucky there. Um, for once this season, we we got lucky and we were able to hit pit road. And uh, and then I messed up our luck and I sped off a of pit road. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, I got to get a little bit smoother in uh, in situations where where things don't go our way. I got to try and calm down a little bit and uh, make them a little bit easier on everybody back uh, on the box. We'll finish on the back there, Dominic. Dominic got to go on the RacingExperts.com and ESPN Radio Albuquerque for both Bob and Chris during those six laps after the caution flew and before you guys came down pit road and the red flag. What was the communication like between the both of you and, and how much was, was being discussed on the radio? I think it was relatively quiet. Um, you know, just trying to, uh, trying to assess how bad the fog was. And, um, you know, I was, uh, I was a little biased. And, and so in my eyes, it was getting worse every lap. And uh, in the spotter's eyes, it was getting worse every lap. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was just trying to, trying to figure out how bad it really was and, and what the chances were. But... Uh, I'd say overall we're both uh, we're both pretty uh, pretty quiet on the radio. We don't say a whole lot, so there was um, a lot of silence, I guess. <laughs> I did ask him the uh, I think the very first time I asked him how the track looked, and he said, "Oh, it looks okay right now." And I'm like, <laughs> "No, <laughs> it's raining somewhere on the racetrack." <laughs> that was that was the first one that went right over my head. So. <laughs> And then, uh, then Spotter communicated that DK couldn't even see us down the back stretch, and it did start getting really bad really quick. That's a rookie move, by the way. I know. I'll be better <laughs> next time. That's good. Well, well, we well, we can't wait to see you in here the next time. Congratulations again, guys, and uh, good luck next week at Watkins Glen. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you it very much. much. Chris, you want to hold tight? We'll keep you up here for our social media chat. Let's see how I'll wait um, then. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I will believe. <laughs>